drop that off and say it's some Christmas love from Concordia, okay? But he's coming to care for us right now. Let's stand up and sing praise and glory to the Lord.
let those free. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayer. Give light despite the darkness of our hearts. By your grace, visit us. Come with your mercy. For you live and win with the Father and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and ever. Dennis reads to us first from Isaiah. 700 years before Jesus, if you remember, this later becomes uh, Jesus' first sermon text himself, a promise of the uh, Messiah coming to our rescue. Uh, the first lesson from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord of Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to be afflicted he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release for those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord favor and the day of the vengeance for our God to comfort all who mourn to provide those who mourn in Zion to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a cloak of praise instead of faint spirit, so that they will be called oaks of righteousness, and planting of the Lord display his beauty. Then they will rebuild ancient ruins. They will raise up what was formerly devastated, and they will renew ruined cities. Yes, I am the Lord. I love justice. I hate robbery and a burnt offering. I will repay them in faithfulness, and I will make them an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring will be known among the nations, and their descendants in, in the midst of the peoples. All who see them will, will recognize that they are offspring whom the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will celebrate because of my God. For as the earth produces its growth, and as a garden causes what has been sown to sprout up, so God the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up. In the presence of all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Second lesson from the book of First Thessalonians. Be full, be full of joy all the time. Never stop praying. In everything, give thanks. This is what God wants you to do because of Christ Jesus. Do not try to stop the work of the Holy Spirit. Do not laugh at those who speak for God. Test everything and do not let good things get away from you. Keep away from everything that even looks like sin. May the God of peace set you apart for himself. May every part of you be set apart for God. May your spirit and your soul and your body be kept complete. May you be without blame when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. The one who called you is faithful and will do what he has promised. This is the word of the Lord. Let's stand then as we hear from the beginning of John's Gospel. After Bob reads to us how uh, John the Baptizer came to prepare the way to prepare our hearts to receive the great gift of Christmas. And our Gospel reading is taken from John 1, 6 through 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that 
through him might all might believe. He himself was not the life. He came only as a witness to the life. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely. I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? No. He answered, No. Finally, they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of the one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one whom you do not know. He is the one who comes after me. The straps of the sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May be seated, friend. Well, indeed, this is a, uh, a joyous coming towards Christmas already. A week away, we've got the uh, pink candle lit, symbol for joy. We're uh, having some joy with our seminary in Uter Paul. Got a little break from his studies to come to see come to back to Sarasota, visit with the sister, and uh, share what he's learned with us, too. Um, it's so much fun to know that it's, uh, it's finally coming, isn't it? Joy. So, kids have Christmas lists, right? <laughs> Some of you remember Sandy's. This one cracked me up. I just saw it online when I looked up Christmas lists. I mean, all kinds of stuff there. The sunset lamp, the makeup, the, uh, the Crocs, the mascara, the earrings, the candy, the dolls. And then you find it to the bottom and it says, turn page, and there's more to come. It's not just the kids, but we all have big dreams for Christmas. So this was a couple years ago, another one I just saw online. All this stuff they want to do to be ready for Christmas, from decorating the tree, to meeting Santa, donating a present to somebody, making ornaments. This cracked me up. Florida! <laughs> Florida for Christmas. But what it's all about is have a, what kind of Christmas we want? Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas. It's exactly where this uh, pink Sunday, the joy of uh, God gathering special people to us is. You know, people coming in and visit us too, I hope. And us being able to, to share that joy, be full of joy all the time, is the, uh, the first words in our epistle reading. Uh, Paul's letter to the Church of Rome. So we're going to think about this stuff. It's really reading like a Christmas list. What God has for us in this uh, word from Paul. Be full of joy all the time. Joy, it seems to me, is something that um, just really has to look forward, you know? Not everything makes me happy, but if I've got a hope that God's going to set stuff right in the future, I can have some joy. Full of joy, because Christmas is almost here. The good thing is coming. Jesus is going to do so much more for us than we can imagine. Full of joy. Another thing on the list, Paul mentions prayer. Now, to me, prayers don't do so much with the future, but I often pray when I'm worried about people that are around me. Prayer has something to do with love. I'm anxious for somebody or for myself. It gets me praying. So that's another great grip that we have from God, that we can actually uh, talk to the power of heaven and know that God is eager to listen to us. Joy, prayer, he's got a third gift for our list here, giving thanks. I'm often thankful for things that have already happened. I believe that these gifts have come from God. So uh, faith kind of grasps hold of what God did in the past and it looks forward to what he's going to do next. I uh, think of joy and prayer and thanks. If you're listening to me, I'm thinking of how that relates also to hope and faith and love. It's always interesting to me when Scripture does things in threes, like Father, Son, and Spirit. Tomorrow, today, and yesterday is kind of the totality of what God wants to give us. Wouldn't it be a wonderful Christmas if we had all that stuff? 
if we had joy deep, deep down in our hearts that was so much it was actually overflowing and coming out with prayer for other people so we can, you know, handle our stress and give it to God and trust Him to take care of other people. And that finally just bounces back then with that great thanksgiving to God. That would just be, I mean, if God could give you that for Christmas, you know, the earrings and the mascara and the dolls and the candy, that's all a bonus, right? What a great Christmas list. Three things that we'd all love to be able to do, right? And then Paul says, be full of joy all the time. Pray, never stop. Give thanks in everything. What? <laughs> Is that the way it actually works? Are you thankful for everything? Like, what are you talking about, Paul? So my dad went to a kindergarten across Lutheran School in uh, downtown Milwaukee. I remember him taking us there years back to go look at the place. <clears throat> I, I should tell you, this, by the way, is one of a uh, truly terrible bulky jokes I haven't told for a while. This is a generational problem. This is an old one from my dad. So my dad claims that when he was in kindergarten, every day he loved it, that the teacher taught them the Pledge of Allegiance, they would do a little devotion together to Lutheran school, and then they had their prayer time. But my dad and his classmates were upset because every time it got to the prayer, there was the one little kid that they sent to go stand outside the classroom in the hall. Like, what? So finally the kid says, teacher, why do you make our friends stand in the hall for the prayers? And the teacher said, Amel? I mean, little Amel ceasing? Don't you know that the Bible says pray without ceasing? <laughs> I told you, it's a really dumb That's generational job. It probably did not actually happen. <laughs> pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. That would be wonderful, but who actually does it? Give thanks in everything. I'm sure you can see a lot of things in the world around you in your own family, in your own broken heart, that you don't like. Full of joy, all of those, so much in this world that make me happy. And there's so much that makes me cry. Like, what really do you want, God, all the time? <laughs> well, how is that going to work? Because that's exactly what Paul says. This is what God wants. Joy all the time. Prayer all the time. Thanks all the time in everything. How can that possibly be? Paul here tells us the great secret to the Christmas list. This is what God wants you to have, to actually be able to do because of Christ Jesus. No, not everything makes me happy. Yesterday, I was at the hospital. The family gathered around Denny, Denny Williams, who's dying. There's nothing more they can do for him. And yesterday, unlike the day before, he got clarity again. So there he is talking about his memories and his dying. And with his family, can you believe joy? It's not a happy situation, but deeper there's this joy, how good God has been to us, and how much more he's going to do for us. And so there's great prayer in that hospital room, and thanksgiving going up. You know, just a little parable about how it is in our lives. Not everything is right, but what does God promise? It's Alice's, the wife's favorite Bible verse. She tells us all the time, Romans 8, verse 20, 28. In all things, not everything is good, but in all things, God works for the good. Even the bad stuff, he's going to turn it around. We know that's true because he has loved us in Christ Jesus, because he has called us according to his purpose. So I had fun Wednesday and the weeks before that in our rehearsals teaching these kids from our partner preschool here. Four and five-year-olds 
Half of them had never heard the Jesus story. They didn't know whose birthday Christmas is, right? And yet, right away, their little hearts take to it. And we're teaching them the song. So, so in this picture, we're going, The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the head. And the kids have great joy then acting out the story for the parents and grandparents and friends who uh, filled the church here. Just, uh, you know, <clears throat> remembering the great stuff of Christmas. So Pastor Ted caught this picture. I was over here on the side talking to the shepherds, getting them ready for the angels coming. And Pastor Ted stood up with his camera and he grabbed a shot and it just cracked me up. I mean, I got all the anxiety of Joseph here. It's like, oh my goodness, I got a baby all of a sudden. And this one's a big deal, right? You can kind of see a little worry on his face. And there's Mary. She's much more practical. But his feet are cold, you know. <laughs> so she's kind of working it out, you know. Glad for the gift. But this was the innkeeper. And she really cracked me up. Wouldn't you just love that? Like, Pastor Ted, why are you taking my picture? That's what it's all about. <laughs> like, yes, little girl, you got it. If you want joy, prayer, thanks, at Christmas, for heaven's sakes, remember it's about the Christ. I mean, so often Christmas can just go screwy on us, right? What does God want? He wants us to have a good one. How's he going to do it? And he does it in the same way. Something I love about this picture. I remember um, when I was a teenager, my parents took uh, my sister and, and me over to uh, Europe and uh, bought a camper bus and we traveled around, I think it was, for seven, eight weeks. And of course, we saw a lot of those great cathedrals. And we were about at the third cathedral where we saw, you know, in this beautiful golden reliquary up there by the altar. A finger like that, a bony finger in the glass. And you read the tour book and it says, well, this is the finger of John the Baptizer, a great relic. Because John the Baptizer is the one who pointed and said, look, here he is, the Lamb of God who's going to take away the sin of the world. <laughs> and then the tour book says, by the way, as you continue through Europe, you will find 26 index fingers of John the Baptizer. <laughs> Everybody wants to have John. In fact, we all get to be like that kid. We all get to play John. This is how God works. Paul says, don't try to stop the work of the Spirit. It's the Spirit who got a hold of John and says, listen, John, you got to point to him. You're the original. Here's the Lamb. The way the Spirit works is he talks through John. He talks through the people he puts in our lives. And I don't know who you learned about Jesus from. Could have been some little kid that was pointing you to Jesus. Maybe a friend back in the day. Maybe your parents or some Christian teacher or pastor. It's not just me who's talking to you now. If it's worth anything, who cares my opinion? I don't even care, really. If it's worth anything, I get to share with you something that's not from me. It's from out of this world. It's from the very Spirit of God. And you too have that same opportunity to get to speak up for God. So it's very easy to say, well, Pastor Stephen had a nice sermon. He talked about joy and prayer and thanks, and it sounded good, but now I'm home, and I got the real world, and the family's coming, or the family's not coming, and I've got these hopes and dreams and desires for Christmas, but who knows? We know how the world really is. <coughs> and we can just kind of like shut it down. It's foolishness! <laughs> this text is like, Paul, like grab us by the chin and go, what are you, crazy? It's Jesus coming for joy for you to fill you up. He's really here. Take it to heart. It's for you that you can talk to him and give thanks. It's the Spirit speaking to you. He's the 
designed this whole thing that I'm standing here talking, and you're there with your rear end in the pew because Jesus wants you to know right now I am coming with my gift for you. Rejoice. Tell me what's going on, says the Lord. Give thanks in all of it. I'm going to work it out. Of course, don't believe everything that every knucklehead says to you. Even my words, you got to test them, right? How do you know that somebody who pretends to be speaking for Jesus is really speaking for him? Test them. How are you going to do that? If you're going to test anything, you got to have some ruler, some yardstick, something you can be able to measure it against. Well, measure their words against what the Spirit has spoken before. God makes it really easy. He says, you want to know if the talker is telling the truth? Compare it to what I gave you in black and white. If I'm telling you to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, you can look it up. Your life does not belong to you. You do not have the right to do that. Right? It's all very quite clear when you look at the book. Test it. If I'm telling you about do, jump into the arms of God and rejoice in the joy he has for you. Check that out in the book. Is that what it says? Can you have that joy? It belongs to you. Test everything. Don't let the good stuff get away from you. Draw it in close. But if somebody's speaking foolishness to you, if they're trying to sell you stuff, you've got to buy this or Christmas isn't going to work. You don't have to buy all that garbage. You don't have to fall for every temptation. Push that stuff away. Focus on the good stuff. Again, I just love these patterns in Scripture. Do not stop the Spirit. Don't laugh at those speaking for God. Don't let the good stuff pull all that stuff. The Spirit and His work and those words and the good stuff that He's got for you. Pull that all close. Hug it right into your heart. But the bad stuff, blah! <laughs> Keep away. It's so visual. It's so true. Why? Why is God going to give us this great Christmas lift of gifts. Why is God to do it? Because He is God. He is God. And he is known as the God of Shalom. I love that peace word. He's at peace with who? He's got peace in Himself, right? There's no trouble inside God. That's not what He's talking about. Glory to God to the highest and peace to who? His people on earth. And God is at peace with you. He knows us. And still, he's at peace with us. So much at peace that he paid the price again to make you his home and set you apart as his own. So much at peace with you that wants every part of you set apart for God. <laughs> that kind of startled me. There's parts of myself that I don't like. There's parts of my past that I wish I could change and they can, like ghosts of Christmas, easily haunt me if I let them. Every part of you set apart for God. This is astounding, especially when you think that these words, God wrote these words, inspired these words through his friend Paul. You want to talk about a fellow with a troubled past. Paul knows full well that he was the one who originally tried to wipe Christianity off the earth. He tried to kill the Christian movement in the cradle. He was out there to destroy the believers who had escaped up to Damascus. And the Lord knocked them off this high horse. And here's Paul saying, every part of me, even murderous me who was out to kill Christians, God has made that special to him. Because God took me as his enemy and made me his friend so that everybody understands. If God can do his wonders in Paul, don't you all have a little hope? 
If God can raise me so high, even the stuff we're ashamed of, God knows how to change it and use it as a blessing for others. All the way through, our spirits, I mean, at Christmas, we can kind of go crazy, our emotions going up and down. Our souls, the way we think about stuff, sometimes we get so mixed up. Even our very bodies, you know. Like Denny, finally, we're all just breaking down. That's the way it is in this world. But that's not the end of the story. You will be complete and whole. <laughs> this is the great Christmas gift that is coming. You will be at last without blame. And sin that messes up everything up, but God says, no, there's no blame on you. How can that be true? Wouldn't that be a great Christmas? Nobody could accuse you ever of messing anything up. No blame. How can that be true? May God do this, may God do that. May God keep you whole and may you be without blame as Paul is saying maybe here. Quite the opposite. It's all absolutely true because Jesus is coming again. Remember, he came the first time to be your brother. Conceived in a womb, born of a virgin. He came that first time to take up on himself your sin. He came that first time to finish everything, rising with new life for you. And he's coming to you now with his words his own body and blood to fill you up with his resurrection strength of all that forgiveness so that before God you do stand blameless even now and at last washed baptized completely made new when he comes again you will stand blameless the father does all this stuff because he promised it. and he cannot lie he's so faithful going to get it done. I mean, that's a Christmas list. I just touched on all this stuff. Joy and prayer and thanks, the Spirit for you, His Word, the speakers, the peace, how you're set apart for God's own purpose even today, complete and blameless, the faithful Father. And you can turn the page and get more from the Scripture. So much Jesus has done for us. Great Christmas list. All true because he's coming again. Lord Jesus, yourself the gift. Fill Lord us with joy, prayer, and thanks. Holy Spirit, speak to us your good. Father, ever faithful, you make us blameless by Christ. Gather up our uh, gifts and gather up our prayers. Thank you, Danny. Brad. There are a number of prayers on the back of our bulletin. Again, uh, thanks for uh, your presence with us. Prayers for uh, Denny and family as the Lord is calling to him. Sandy tells me I got the Trish and the Steve backwards. It's uh, Steve who's grieving Trish, her friend. Prayers for that one. Are there other prayers here that you want to add? Are these already on the list? The other one I need to mention is um, some of you know um, Julie and uh, Sean Smith. Sean's father, uh, Dave, had a uh, health crisis and uh, yesterday was at the uh, intensive care unit. I'm not sure where that stands today. And, um, prayers there for uh, Dave, the uh, Smith's dad and grandma. Are there other prayers? Granddaughter Kira, the Lord's care and guidance. Other prayers? Let's stand as we go to the Lord for prayer then. First, we're going to speak the Apostles' Creed. Faith in the one who's coming. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Forgiveness of sins, resurrection.
Savior coming to the rescue. Pour out your Holy Spirit into our frail hearts. Make us strong and whole to receive the joy that overflows with prayer for others and gives great thanks for you and for all you have done for us. The gift of the Father. Keep us faithful, Heavenly Father, even as you have been so faithful in your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would breathe new life into this dying world. Let your good word flourish. Despite the lies, despite the darkness, the poverty and the foolishness, the injustice, come with your good word of the King coming. The justice, the peace, the forgiveness, the mercy, the care that at last shall conquer. Fill us with that hope that our faith may overflow with love. Lord, in your mercy, as you have called each one of us in the waters of baptism, called us into the great family of faith spanning the globe through all the generations. Lord, we are mindful that you still care for us each and all. So we pray, I pray that you would give that healing and that strength and that comfort so desired by Debbie, Weston, Roger, Shirley, David, Betty, Sandy, Joe, Kim, Ken, and Don. Comfort for Steve grieving Trish. Care for Dave. Wisdom and strength for Kira, Lord, for each of us in our need. Praising you for Seminary in Uter and his growing. After the Lord, you teach each of us growing in your good work. Sharing your kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As those invited to the family table where Jesus comes to us, as those looking forward to the feast above that has no end, already now, Jesus, we lift to the Father the prayer that you have taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy
servant depart in peace, as your word promised. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now. his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.